So you want to learn how to paint a jellyfish with watercolor. Hi, I'm Sue Lewis Schroeder and welcome to this tutorial. Anyway, so we're starting off with our sketch and I'm going over it with a new eraser here. One thing I'm going to mention is that you will get little clips of my full palette throughout this video so you can see the colors I'm mixing and kind of the texture I want to say that I'm mixing on like whether or not they're washes like here you can see my palette in its current state and we're going in with a bit of a magenta and some cadmium and here so I'm going to break this into different parts we're going to do like the inner jellyfish then the cap and the background so those are the different parts right now we're doing the inner jellyfish and the tentacles I should have made and the jellyfish that I'm doing has a yellowish white toned tentacle and in inner I'm going to call it an inner brain. That's what I'm going to call it. I do not i I'm not saying that it's anatomically correct or anything, it's just it's like a brain. Anyway, so we're going in and on dry paper. We're taking the um, wash of yellow, cad yellow and magenta, and we are tapping it on very lightly with a soft bristle brush. Er, the bristles on the brush are soft, it's not a bristle brush. It is a Princeton Neptune brush, and then we're taking this stiffer brush, it's a not as a blunt round and I'm using a soft size 8 and I'm using that to blend out the little dots and the reason is if you've seen the jellyfish with the long tentacles you see that they have little frills to them and this is the technique I'm using to create those frills of frills because I didn't draw the frills out individually. So I'm using very, in the wash, it's very little pigments, a very light wash, very transparent. And the goal is to build on the texture. And so right here, I'm starting on the color for the back. And I have that little section of paper to test color time. Right here, I went in with a more of a Prussian blue and a little bit of emerald green to make this background color. And right here I'm adding what's called a wax resist. It's like taking, I'm taking transparent wax but you can use um, like a white crayon and I'm rubbing it on the paper in different spots where I don't want the paint to be. So it creates this kind of patchier looking texture and as I build it up in layers you will see some of the cool effects. Like right at the top of the jellyfish, you see where I just went over the brush, ran over the paper with my brush, and it left kind of a sharper line. And some of the, it's just, it's not even at all, the background. And that's the goal to create the illusion of water. That's why I'm using the wax resist. It's a new technique I was trying out. I haven't actually done it before. But it looks like fun. And all this so far has been done onto dry paper and then letting everything dry in between each layer. And going over it again and using the art slot brush to smooth or to blend out the hard edges and leaving some softer edges.
And some of you may be asking why I do the background first. I wanted to make sure I had placed all of the tentacles where I wanted them. And some of you might be asking why I didn't wait till the end to do the background. And I didn't wait till the end because I wanted to make sure the color volumes matched. So I didn't want to get to the end and paint the background of where I wanted it to go and look at the jellyfish and go, oh, I didn't paint that enough. So I wanted to build it up evenly in a nice way. This color right here is, I think they pronounce it, oh, I'm going to butcher this name, but for, for, for blue, for, okay, whatever, it's like a, uh, a brown tone magenta that is very transparent, and I'm mixing that in with the blue to deepen it and darken it. And as I build the silicon layers, like right there, you see how it's very beaded on the piece of paper. Well, it will dry down to the texture, and that is the reason for applying the wax resist. And somewhere along here, I added some more on top of the paint and the dry paint. Okay. Right here, we should be. Yes, right there. I'm adding more wax resist to the paper to increase the layers and because I'm using clear wax you can see through the colors underneath as I continue to add more and it creates a very unique look and texture to the paint. Okay, I'm going into the emerald green right here, and I'm adding it to the blue. It's some impression blue. It's not super. It's not a super green blue, but it's the green tone blue. So whatever you want that works. And I'm also adding in the brown magenta color. And all these colors that I'm using, except for the cadmium yellow, are transparent. And that's very important for what I'm, the effect that I'm trying to achieve. I'm trying to achieve a very light, flowy effect. And the reason I decided to go with the cadmium yellow, as opposed to the lemon yellow, is because as I layer it up, I want the, well, this for a couple of reasons. So one of the reasons being that when it's very diluted, it's somewhat transparent and it looks pretty good. And then the second reason being, as I layer it up, there can be certain sections where I do want it to be somewhat thick and to help give definition to the tentacles, I'm going to want that. So that's why I decided to go with that yellow. Yeah. And right here, I just created a darker magenta, um, it's not the change of purple. So I went into the purple in this set and I added some blue to it. And then I'm adding, creating an emerald green mixture to go along with that tone. And what I'm doing is testing it out on the little side strip of paper. And then here I'm going into the orange. I'm going to mix that with a little bit of the purple. And the reason for doing that is I wanted to calm down on the purple a bit because it's a very pigmented purple. I also add some of that brown tone magenta. And the goal here is to create a mob. And the reason I went in a little bit of orange is because it was close to yellow and it grays out the purple a little bit because yellow and purple are complementary colors. So it grays out the purple just a little bit to give it a softer effect. And I am not very sure as to the type of orange this is, but it seemed transparent, so that's why I chose it. And also it's in this palette, it's the only orange. 
And here I'm using the very soft, well, I don't know what I did right here. Probably uh, I took my new eraser because there was a line I wanted to erase, but I didn't want to disturb the paper too much or touch any wet parts. But I took the a very soft brush to go with that first center layer with. Then I took the artist soft brush and just added plain water on it. And then I'm taking that soft brush and dropping in a little bit of that magenta color. I do that around the whole cap of this jellyfish. And you have to be very careful in layering complementary colors on top of each other because there's a chance it could gray out. So that's why I'm going to be very careful to use a soft brush and to make sure the paper is fully dry. And here I'm defining the little sections of the jellyfish with a very, with that dark purple color. And you can see it's nearly dry on my palette, but I have just a little bit of water on the paintbrush to make a very concentrated um, paint mixture, and that's what I'm using to line the different sections of the jellyfish. As you can see right here, I'm skipping between, leaving a undefined section between each section that I'm defining. The reason is because I do a wash in the center, as you just saw. And I don't want the different sections to blend into each other. So it, for me, kind of ruins the point of defining them, like they're going to blend right back together. Since what I'm doing, I'm using the very tip end of the paintbrush to get that fine line. And then because the center of the section is all wet, I'm dipping, or dropping I should say, dropping in a little bit extra pigment to create, to let it blend together by itself and create its own thing. And I'm working on the petal or petal sections in between now because those first sections are dry. And here you can see in more detail me dropping in some extra color to add some definition to it and some variety. So if you see some of the jellyfish, they have many different colors. They're transparent, but they have a lot of different colors in their cap, I'm going to call it. So that's how I'm trying to achieve that. So I'm using these transparent colors on wet paper and I'm dripping them in. But the edges are done on dry paper. So edges first, get that done using a very technical brush, and then do these um, And doing it on wet paper keeps the paint from getting too defined and it lets it flow kind of just by itself do its own thing so that it doesn't look like you intended it to be there so it just it doesn't look forced. It looks very natural. And it also stops you from putting too much or building up too quickly. You do this effect best, I've found. You have to build it up in very thin layers. So, that's what I'm doing. And then shortly here, you'll see, I wanted to show you what it looks like when you flip the image. So. A lot of people say like, hey, if your drawing doesn't look right, turn it upside down or take a picture of it and flip it and inverse it and look at it in the mirror and I wanted to show you kind of why. So when you look at this jellyfish this way, it looks fairly normal. 
but when the image is inversed or flipped, you can kind of see where it looks just a little bit off. And that's because it wasn't drawn entirely proportionally. And you can see, see how that affects the inverse of the image. But it's up to you whether or not you particularly care about that. I didn't really too much care. I kind of like the way it looked this way and saw this paper. I don't intend to inverse the image later. So that's, that's the way it is for me. Anyway, continuing on with the painting, I'm just building up the edges and I'm probably continuing down to the underside right here. Yes. And then making sure to get the reverse side of those sections on the other side of the jellyfish. And because it's the underneath part of the cap, you probably want to go a little bit lighter on the colors. I did not think about that till later. But it turned out okay. And right here, is where you get to see the inverse of this thing. So it seems a little bit off if you look at it. And to me this whole thing, this whole image just looks funny, but you can kind of see where the image just doesn't look fully shaped correctly and that's the reason why you look at it in the mirror to try to get it to look proportional. Anyway, I'm going in with a darker mixture of that cadmium yellow and magenta. And I think, I'm pretty sure, I added a little bit of that magenta brown color, or brownish magenta color, to start a deep thing. a little bit more. And the reason why I'm mixing in this red is I wanted to warm it up a little bit. But I also did not want to add too much cadmium yellow because I didn't want to be fully, I didn't want it to be opaque yet because so much of this is very transparent. I didn't want to change that too much. As you can see when I'm adding the definition, trying to get the frills and tentacles to look where I wanted to, to follow the correct line, and to attach the fills to the correct position, if that makes sense, so that it doesn't look like it's just a blob floating there. You know, I just said that, and I should say no pun intended, because a jellyfish is kind of a blob floating there. Well, well then. <laughs> throughout this piece and I'm using two paint brushes is because I have the pigment on one brush, the paint on one brush, then I just have plain water on the other brush and I'm using the water to blend out the paint that I put down and create softer edges around the little dots that I put in. And for the most part I wait just a couple, just a little bit for it to dry down and then here is just the palette and the way it's looking. I don't really think I dip into it very much. I don't mix any colors, but that's the way it is. Yeah, I just dip into the other kind of shit. Maybe I don't. Anyway, I don't really mix any more colors, so that was the palette. And then right here I'm just adding some finishing painterly details. And what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to end up inking this. So I used a dip pen to do this, but you can use a Nikon or even a ballpoint pen or a roller pen or one of the other one. There's one more type. Felt tip. You can use a felt tip pen to do this next section. I had a dip pen, so I used a dip pen. Um, I like to find the variation lines, but to do that with a micron pen, you use a very fine one, you can do the whole thing, and then you can go over the parts that you want to add line variation to, 
with either a slightly thicker one or you can just use that thin one and go over it and add the thickness that comes with the thickness if that makes sense. If necessary, I have to help if you want to make these line definitions. But yes, I just continue to deep down, add the yellow mixture to darken it. And I think you can probably see here where I say kind of attach the frills to the tentacles and give them a flow in a direction. And again, I'm not changing anything, I just let it dry and then go over with the same color mixture again in the different spots that I think need to be darkened and defined. All in the exact same techniques. And you saw I let it dry a little bit before using some water to blend it out so it leaves a little bit of definition without being too harsh. And going back into those same colors from before, I'm adding my definition to the background. I do believe I added a little bit more on the green, and in thinking about this, I have to take back what I said about not using or mixing any more out. And I did just that. Oh, I did quite a bit more. So here I'm adding some of the emerald green to the cap of this jellyfish. And the thought was to add a little bit more definition and like unique texture to this jellyfish. Because it's like, well, they're transparent, the water's kind of green toned and blue toned. Wouldn't you be seeing that on a jellyfish? And it was also an experiment, so I have no idea. I don't normally wear emerald green over a bottle. So I wanted to see how that would turn out. I'm just going back and forth, adding a little bit of color and blending it out for the green. Um, what else do I have to say about that? You need a very soft brush if you're going to be doing this and you don't want to lift up the pigment underneath. And you're going to be adding as many layers to this type of paper because this is cheaper waterproof paper. So you use a stiffer brush and the paper will start to fill up so or if you don't let it fully dry in between layers after a while it just it doesn't sit right the paper loses its texture if you overdo it but with the amount of layers i did on this piece of paper i didn't have that problem and i think i could have done quite a few layers. I figured I'd just give it a little more. Okay, right here I'm getting my dip pen out and I have no idea what tip I used on it. It kind of looks in. I will go in and say the reason I chose this is filter is so that you can fully see like the detail in the lines. You see the reasoning behind all the layers. 
as you can see the light and the dark and the way that adds its effects. I wanted to give a more illustrated example of why um, the layers did do what they do. They add some texture to the piece and adding the ink is another way to add this texture and definition and it just helps to like bring together all the little pieces that we did so far. And here's the final piece. Let tag me on Instagram and let's see the illustrator to let me know and see your guys' pieces. Thanks for watching. Till next time.